lane fast, call it high speed I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely I be taking shots, yeah, cold-blooded, icy Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing In the front row, run it up when they hype me The following grows, they know how to ignite me Call me CEO, I've been running shit right, see Hey everyone Okay, so welcome back to another podcast. We're actually going to do a deep dive on Alison. So I've been wanting to do this for ages because everybody, I mean, we've got stuff from back in 2015. So we're going to go through her old blog and this might be a long one, but I am going to be putting on YouTube. So um, I had a couple of people ask me if we were going to be doing the live on YouTube, but I feel like it's just easier on here because... Obviously, we all know who each other are on here and stuff like that. So, I thought it'd be a good one. But everyone's always like, um, who's Alison? Like, what? Or they just know from her now and they don't realise, like, the severity of what it was back then. So, I actually have some screenshots and stuff that I'm thinking it's going to work that I'll be able to put up on the back screen. So, Alison now, I think her account is called, like, Trauma Llama. Or something like that it's yeah some trauma llama I don't know she changes her account like every couple of weeks like it's always a big change it's like oh I don't want this drama and then she'll like change accounts and everybody will follow her I think usually she gets a new account with every boyfriend that she has everything I have to post today come from sober life if you guys don't know I'll, I'll just comment and tag them I think might be the way Sorry, just TWT here interrupting to let you know that I spelt that wrong. It's actually Sober Life 420. So S O B E R L Y F 420. And that is Alison's main exposing page. Yeah, like, there's tons. So she was, I just looked at it, right? And it said here, like the first blog that I can see from her, she's had a blog called Journey to Hell. And the absolute first one that she posted was Saturday the 20th of June in 2015. So, um, I started my page around about the same time. So it was sort of like when I started the page, there was a lot of Alison stuff. Like everybody talked about Alison because I know I started my page in July of 2015. That's crazy guys. That's like almost seven years. That's some commitment. <laughs> but, um, because I had my son in April, actually my child, my last child was born the exact same day as Courtney Owen's kid, Shiloh. So that's nuts. Um, but anyway, so we'll just go through the vlog first. So if you want to find the blog yourself, it's called Journey from Hell, com, dot com. Okay. But this is like, we'll just read through some of the stuff and then I'm sure some of you guys will be able to like jump in. And it will be able to show you some of the proof because like with Alison, like there was a lot of drugs. There was a lot of neglect. Um, she has, so Alison, I, I don't know how old she is now. I think maybe 26, 27. You hear Belle, it's my cat walking around. But anyway, so we'll start off. And so she, she names it Christopher. So she says, I'm getting so much hate and I don't know why. No one is in my position right now. I literally feel no happiness anymore. My happiness is gone because I was doing the right thing. I was a mature parent. All Justin does is use Christopher against me and act so immature. He doesn't think about Christopher's best interests. So Justin is her baby daddy. CJ at like 7 and 18. I think he's 8 maybe. Okay. Um, I remember her being pregnant. She was like 16. So that makes sense. Because I was thinking in my head she was like 25. Um, so she might be a bit older. Um, anyway, she says... Um, that boy needs his mother and I'm his mother. I'll make sure it happens. Want to know why I miss court? Because I'm the only working parent. I'm the one working full time and really difficult job to supply for my two children. No work isn't more important than my son, but him getting what he needs is pretty important. Why is everyone so quick to judge? I'm legitimately doing everything at my abilities to to get my shit together, to get those boys back. And all I do is get torn down. You people don't even know what kind of mother I am. I've never met you. You don't know who I am. And I don't know why I'm still being harassed by people. If you want to hurt me, might as well do it physically because it hurts a lot, a hell of a lot less. 
than what I've been dealing with. I want this to be over. I want to stop court cases. I want to stop all the immaturity. I want to stop the drama. Everything needs to stop. I'm at the point where I don't care. I don't care about my life. I lost everyone I love anyways. I don't get to see my oldest son anymore. My baby is harder to see too. What is the purpose of even being alive? It looks like I've held back too long. The only way I can be happy is with my razor blade. So be it. I need happiness before I die. I know my health will be will be willing. I know my death will be willing. I just don't know when. Um, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh hey Mia. I have your request there. Um obviously I like I've got to wait for you to accept the request before I accept. But that's crazy that you're on here because I have not seen you in forever. This is like back to your days when Ali was around and all that crap was going down with Allison. That's insane. When I read Sarah, I was like, oh my God, what? <laughs> okay, so she doesn't have her kids. She didn't have her kids. So the oldest one at Christopher is with the, um, the dad who is Justin. Now, he actually had a girlfriend named Brooke. I think her name was Brooke. And she basically raised CK. I know they broke up like a couple of years back. Um, but she raised CK from a baby. C is it CK? No, CJ. CJ? Fuck, I forget now. Um, I'll just say Christopher. So she raised Christopher as a, he, as a baby. He went to Justin. Now, I remember at the time when this vlog was happening. Anyway, so... Christopher was was being raised by Justin. Now, I remember like back when this was happening um, and I, I just want to also give a quick trigger warning as well because there is a lot of stuff in this in regards to self-harm and cutting and things like that and suicide. So obviously, if you can't handle that, like just do not listen to this podcast. Do not listen to it on YouTube. Whatever you do, don't listen to it, okay? Because it's not something that you want to be listening to. I do recall there was a time where, so this must have been just after she lost both of them. So she lost the oldest one, Christopher. He went to, he was staying with Justin. I think Justin was looking after him the whole time anyway. And then when she fell pregnant with the Caleb, which is the youngest one, she kind of just walked off and left Christopher. Like she still talked about him all the time, but she was like, oh, you know, he's making it too hard. And I feel like um, Caleb was more like a, like a replacement almost. Yeah, she was living with her parents when she, well, with her mother anyway. And I think her brother lived there too. And I'm really not sure if her brother was like, I don't know what's sure, what's sure what's going on with him now because she's been talking a lot about her brother and a victim. And I'm thinking maybe there's like some sexual assault involved in it. I don't know. She keeps saying it's not her story to tell, but she's like on tiktok every single day doing all these things about like what he did to her and all the rest but like very vague kind of like what taylor does you know how taylor does that really vague um like i'm gonna tell you everything but i'm gonna tiptoe around it and not really tell you anything no the boys don't have the same dad i actually can't remember who the father of the other was was his name andrew as well i can't remember like this we're talking like seven years ago man like a long time ago but anyway so she was living with a mum. She had Caleb. And this is back in the days of Periscope, okay? So if you don't remember what Periscope is, it's just like what we have here now. You go live, people jump on and they can like listen to you and they leave comments and stuff. And like she was on it all the time. And this kid was badly neglected. So originally what happened was, you know, Caleb had this rash. I will find the rash just so you guys can understand what we're talking about. So this baby had this rash and it was so bad. It was eczema all over his face and stuff. And now like she's been claiming that it's like um, cirrhosis. She's like, oh, you know, I had cirrhosis and my baby had it and all the rest. But it, it was like eczema and it was so bad. Like this baby had it all over his face and she used to put like socks on his hands so that, to stop him from scratching himself. But the socks were filthy. But that was so good. I just remember the socks now. I don't think there are any of these pictures, but the, the socks were filthy. But his face was so bad. And she ended up having CPS called on her. And CPS came and had a look. And they were like, oh my God, you know. And she's like, I've been doing everything. I went to the doctors. They gave me creams. I'm doing everything I can. And like this girl was on Periscope 24-7 cirrhosis how do you guys say it we say cirrhosis <laughs> i always when someone says the word i'm like mm. 
oh, I don't know. I think we say psoriasis. Psoriasis, cirrhosis. Shit, my bad. Uh, I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> psoriasis. <laughs> you guys are spelling it to me like I couldn't know how it said. Wait, do I have Siri? Let me let me ask Siri. No, Siri. What you doing, Siri? No, she's on vacation. Psoriasis. What did I say? Cirrhosis. Cirrhosis. Oh, anyways, we'll just, whatever, however you guys say it over there, because we say the liver one is psoriasis, and then the other one I think is cirrhosis. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, we say stuff really weird, so um, I could be saying it completely and utterly wrong. Or I could just be saying it with an Australian accent. But I'll take you guys' word for it anyway. But anyway, so the kid had it. It was all over his cheeks. And it was bad. Like, it was scabbed up all over his cheeks. And she was like, I've tried everything. And people were like, you need to do something about that baby. Like, he does not look well. This is a picture. Okay, so that's the picture there. Um, you can obviously see his cheeks are so bad. Like, that is so bad. It was, like, scabbed up, red raw. It looked like he had been dragged along gravel. Like, it was horrendous. And, like, even now, she always says, oh, you know, and this is, like, what Sober Life has said. So, it is at Sober Life 420. It's on the screen now if you want to follow them. I don't know if they'll accept you or what the deal is, but that's what they're called. And she was saying to everyone, oh, no, no, that's, it's fake. that's a false accusation. Like, this didn't happen or whatever. She claims, like, I did everything I could for him. But what happened was CPS came and they were like, all right, well, she's obviously not caring for him. And she wasn't. Like, she was on live 24 7 she was always on live doing something she was never actually looking after him like he was just I don't know <laughs> left to fend for himself and her like her mother would be at work so CPS were like well we're gonna have to remove him out of her custody so the mum stepped up Alison's mum stepped up and she was like okay well I'll take custody um of him but she had to work so she would leave Caleb with Alison still throughout the day. So it, it really wasn't any different than what it was already because mum was working before and she would come home and pretty much have to like step in and care for him. So they were like giving her parenting courses and stuff like that. It was really bad. Like, look at that for scabs on his face. Like you can see the infection. And he was such a beautiful baby. Look at those eyes. But anyway, it was hard. It was very hard to watch. And then, yeah, mum stepped in and she was like, okay, well, you know, I'll take I'll take custody of him. So I remember his mum would go to work and this was like at the point, like he got to the point where, because I think she left for a bit and then she came back. Like she used to come back to her mum's all the time and she'd be back in with her mum's and she'd go and like get a boyfriend or whatever. And I remember like her brother used to always be like bringing her stuff home. Her brother used to always like be, she'd just, she'd always be at the back smoking. She'd be on Periscope, the baby would be inside. She'd like come inside. And I remember even when he was like really, really super little, he would be like, like he'd be crying for food and he'd come over and she'd be like, oh, all right then. And she'd like give him like a, a couple of bites of noodles, but she'd never actually just get off Periscope to feed him or anything like that. And he was always like, you know, whining. And I do remember one day she was on Periscope and, and I remember like he'd have these big saggy nappies. Like he'd have the big saggy nappies on. People would be like, dude, like you need to jump off and change his nappy. And she'd be like, his nappy's fine. Like, and she would snap at everybody and she'd crack a shit. And people were trying to help her back then because it wasn't like, I think a lot of people thought, like she was a bad mom, but they also thought maybe she was just uneducated and didn't understand. So they would like try to help her, but she was always on Periscope. And this one day her mom came home and he was in a shit and he'd been there for like, and I remember people were like, Oh, he need to change his nappy. And she didn't. And the mom came home and seen, and he, she went, she was like, why do you, and she went off, right? She was like, why don't you change his nappy? So she picks him up and she takes him off and, and Alison is still on Periscope. And then she comes back and she starts screaming at her and she's like, this baby's bottom is like red raw. Like how, how long has he been sitting in that poop for? And like we knew of at least an hour because we we're on the periscope watching it. And we we're like, oh, my God, 
change his nappy, you know, oh, it was horrible, it was so horrible, but anyway, like, that is such a confronting picture to see that baby, but as soon as CPS handed care over to the mum, this rash that he had had for ages cleaned up, you know, I think it was two weeks and it started to get better. Like, that's one with the socks on. And can you see, like, these ones aren't as bad as some of the other ones were. But you can you can see the dirt on those socks. Like, you would think, you know, you just keep changing it. Like, if it was that bad, like, you're putting cream on it, you would just keep changing it. But that's, that's another one with the sock. Oh, you can't really see because of the picture. Yeah. It, it was, I think it was within, like, straight away it started to improve. And with two, within two weeks, it was completely gone. So everyone was like, all right, so you try for months and months. Like, I took him to every doctor and I can't do it and this and that. And it was, I think it was just pure laziness. Like, she wasn't cleaning it. She just put the socks on and go about. And, like, this was, like, an infection, you know. It was really bad. Oh, I hate even looking at those pictures. But it, it was awful. And she would come back and forth. But, like, with CJ, she kind of just, like palmed him off and I remember one at one point because her mum would just let her come back all the time and I think like I could never work out if Alison's mum was good or bad because she'd come back and she'd be screaming and I'm thinking oh my god like you know maybe if you're going to accept a child and say well I'll be the guardian of this child one I didn't think it was okay for her to be like going to work and still leaving him with because it, there's no difference like she always lived with her mother so you know her mum's still seeing Caleb every day was she like sitting there and just watching this infection sit in and not doing anything or was she trying to help and Alison was like no fuck off and then like you know obviously CPS steps in they give her the child and then she has more of a say I don't know what was happening but Alison's mum would always let her move back in she'd be like okay you can move back in and she just want to be with Caleb and then she would like meet some dickhead online and then off she'd go again like it was just I don't know, it was atrocious. But I do remember when she was living, um, she she had moved and she came back. She was meant to come back. And Brooke and Justin had said to her, like, you know, we want you in CJ's life. Because I think they got jack of it towards the end. And I understand that because she ended up just signing over custody. I don't believe he even had to go to court. I think she just, like, gave in because she just couldn't be fucked. But I, I do know that there was one time where they said to her, like, you know, they organised for her to come and stay there so that she could um, see Christopher and hang out with him. And, like, that's pretty courteous of Brooke to be like, yeah, you know, bring your ex-girlfriend into our house. Like, even offered the, for them to, for her to stay there at their house to spend time with Christopher and stuff. And I feel like that's a pretty big thing. Like, who wants their ex, their partner's ex-girlfriend at their house especially if it was Alice and he had to like be confronted with the fact that he dotted that you know what I mean like I don't oh I don't know but anyway she was like she made up this big story and was like I couldn't get off work so I couldn't get back there so she like cancels last second and goes she claims she's going to work and she's like I'm not leaving work for this like don't you realize how important it is like I've got to support my kids I think that was like what she's referencing up there as well and she's like, I have to support my kids. And then, like, two days later, she was off sick for no reason. Like, it was some other random shit. And it's like, okay, so you can't take off work sick to go to court. But you can take off work to pretend to be sick to get wasted. Anyway, so the next heading she has is cyberbullying. And she says, I get asked daily how I put up with all the shit people put me through. And I honestly don't know how to answer. I don't. I don't deal with it. I sit here and I let it tear me on the inside while I make it seem like everyone around me... that." Make it seem to everyone around me that I'm okay. How would anyone deal with it? They truly don't. They will say it does not bother them. Then that's all they think about when they are alone. They'll say they're okay and they laugh it off when they truly don't. No one can say I don't know what I'm talking about because I do for years, probably longer than Sierra Satterfield. I've been just dealing with this. <laughs> like, <sighs> all right. The only reason Sierra has ever dealt with any kind of flack on the internet is because she's fucking dealt it and people give it back to her. Sierra used to be a real twat back in the day. Like I, I remember following Sierra and thinking, oh, this poor girl, like she's bullied because that's what they were all saying. Like, you know, Sierra, and that was her, that was her tagline. Like when they used to tag each other in the 
sex Sunday, sex confession Saturdays and stuff, they'd be like, go and follow this girl. Like, she's so bully, but I love her. Like, what the fuck? And people would be like, oh, I feel sorry for her because that is what it's like. Like, the Insta mums, a lot of them are famous because it's like a pity thing. Like, you have to find what your niche is. Like, oh, I'm bullied. Like, Becca's was, I live in a shelter, you know. Crystal's was like, oh, I'm such a victim. Like, domestic abuse that I keep going back to constantly and creating drama on the internet constantly. You know, she would, it's not just so much the fact that she would go back to DV because we all know we all, we've all done it. Probably most of us have done it, not going to lie. But the fact was she would be you know, posting all that shit all over social media for people to look at. So this is what annoys me about when people say, oh, you know, Sierra. And then I went and followed Sierra and I was like, oh, okay. And she was so fucking rude to people in the comments. And because she's so, like, I don't want to be mean, but like, we know she's not the brightest crayon, you know, so she would read people's comments and and she'd snap at them because she wouldn't read it with the tone or she wouldn't understand like the punctuation and she would read it wrong. And then she'd be like, oh, my God, like, they're coming for me. And she'd just attack these people in the comments. And they'd be like, Sierra, fucking chill, man. And, like, I remember, like, this one time I had, she'd written something to someone. And I was like, oh, my God, she totally read that. And I wrote to her and I said, hey, you read that tone totally wrong. Like, I wrote it on the, on the comment. I said, you read that, t- t-? like, they didn't mean anything by it. And she's like, you can fucking go to. And she blocked me. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, and, and I never knew back then, obviously, how, um unintelligent she was so I didn't realize that she that's just I I don't know like I wasn't you know I thought oh my god she's such a bitch and I didn't realize that that was the case um but that's how I became a part of the pages because I then read someone else's oh I think I messaged that person I was like oh my god um and they were like oh I, and they'd found this page and they told me about the Sierra page so I started following it I was like oh my god this is way more fun than following the actual insta mums <laughs> like let's let's be honest here but anyway she says I agree with some people maybe if I made better choices back then I wouldn't be attacked every day but people make mistakes now you've got to remember as well this was pre meth days this is pre meth so you know, this was just, there was, there was no substance abuse at this point. I think like her brother used to bring her weed, but like it's weed, you know? Um, but she says, some people say they'll never forget you. They're truthful to their word. I normally cry myself to sleep or cry making a post. I'm almost too scared to post anything anymore. Why? Because the cruel things people comment on my post hurt. They're so vile, so hateful, just so destroying. I don't think I would ever to this day expect not to be bullied as I have been since the fourth grade, but I was hoping to have a few more friends. I wanted people to care about. I wanted people in my life, but now I'm too scared. Who do I trust? Who won't tell my hate page? Who's two-faced? Why is she nice to me? She wants something. She wants information sent to my hate page. I can't trust her. I can't trust no one. My mind runs like this every day. It's tiring. Now, I don't know who her hate page was, like her alleged hate page, but I know she ran her own at one point. So I don't know if she's talking about that one because obviously this is too far gone. But I am like, there was a, a point where she run her own page. And I mean, a lot of them have done it. Sarah's done it too because they run their own page to see who's going to send stuff in. That was like one of the biggest hurdles when I first started my page because I wasn't known to anyone. Like no one knew who I was. Um, I didn't really have like friends on there. Like there was people that I followed and stuff, but like no one knew who I was. So like I could have remained anonymous forever. Like no one would have ever known. Like, that was a hurdle because people were like, oh, I'm a, it's probably one of the Insta mums again. Like, Yuliana used to make hate pages of herself all the time. And Sierra did it. Crystal ran her own hate page for, like, the longest time. It wasn't the Jung Morris page, but it was that pretty and pearly pink page. It was the one that she ran, apparently. Um, so, like, that was that was another crazy thing that she, she ran her own hate page. Um she actually had like two supporting pages. One of them is still up and it's called Alison Patton Update. Patton's P-A-T-T-E-N. And it's still up there. So you can actually read a couple of them up there. It's an open page. You don't have to join it or anything. You can just watch it from the outside. But she had one page that did support her and was like, oh, she's getting a lot of hate lately. Like, let's. And everyone was kind of like on the page, like, let's show our support, you know. But it was just, it was pointless. It didn't matter which way she. She got attention. I think she preferred the hate attention over anything else. 
Um, but when she says, soon I'm going to give up, it's no wonder why I expect my death to be suicide. People are slowly pushing me. Again, anyone that's joining, like, trigger warning that there are talks of self-harming and suicide. There is also some talk of rape later on and there is some of miscarriage as well. So this is like, I probably needed to have like a big heading saying trigger warning, but um, I didn't have one. Anyway, she says, I, um, it's no wonder I expect my death to be suicide. People are slowly pushing me. 15 people a day say, go kill yourself. The world is better off without you. Now, I have never seen any evidence of this. She says, I go cut my wrists. You're an attention whore. Why would you do that? You've got kids. Make up your mind. Do you want me dead or not? Because you're just going, you're, because what you're doing to me, all of you is slowly killing me. I'm dead on the inside, not just out. Now, like, I've never seen any evidence of people saying to go and kill yourself. Um, usually, that kind of crap's never accepted on. Like, if someone wrote that on my page, I know you guys would be like, who the fuck is this? They need to get the fuck out of the page. Like, I know what you guys are like, and I know that you would never, ever, ever accept someone saying that to someone else. Like, that is just not what our page is about. Like, yeah, we see it subbed on the other Anon pages, maybe, like, once a year, some dickhead writes it. But we all know that that's not acceptable on my page. Like, I feel like I wouldn't even have to say anything if it was said, you would all just, I'd wake up and there'd be like a thousand notifications of like, this person is scum, you know, people just don't do that. But in saying that, I don't believe, like, she's sitting there acting like this is the same group of people. Like, people are like, don't do that. Like, you've got kids, you know, that's it's silly to be cutting yourself or to be talking about suicide or whatever. Though That other person probably just one person on their own. But like, there was a lot of people like, I was one of the people that was like, okay, you know, go easy on her. She's having a hard time. I tried to be friendly with Alison. We actually, she is a lot like Courtney when it comes to like drama and like creating hate and stuff like that. A lot like Courtney. I remember when she was dating this guy called Glenn and we'll get up to Glenn in a bit, but she was dating this guy called Glenn and he ended up going to jail for something and she's called like she was like here's my husband Glenn was like her street husband I believe she said she claimed everyone that they got married but then she later on admitted that they didn't actually get married and I remember this was back when Narelle was like huge on the page you know Narelle was just starting drama left right and fucking center and she was one of the people that did not like Alison and she would always cause drama with her like maybe the person telling her to go kill herself was Narelle because that seems like something she would say back then but most normal people wouldn't have said anything like that but anyway I had been sent screenshots from someone and it was pictures that Narelle had taken of a letter and the letter was addressed to Glenn and the prison and she had put like kisses all over it like Narelle was so fucking extra like the shit she would go to to get out rise out of people like she literally wrote this guy a love letter and was like leave Allison be with me like I can do so much more for you and she writes this letter she dresses it to him and she like puts lipstick on and she kisses the letter all over right like puts these kiss marks on the letter <laughs> like makes me cringe thinking about it but anyway it got sent to me and we had talked about it and it hadn't been posted yet because we we're waiting on something else and I said to this person can I po- can I share this with Allison so she knows it's going on and they were like, yeah, that's fine, but she can't tell anyone. So I was like, okay. So I said to Alison, I'm like, I want to tell you something, but I don't, like, you cannot say it to anyone. Like, you have to keep it confidential because they're waiting on other stuff, you know? And she's like, oh, yeah, no, I will, I will, I will. So I was like, are you sure? And she's like, I promise, I swear to God, I will. So I was like, okay. So, and I was always nice to her. We had never had anything bad on the page. Um, can we go back to the pic of your avatar? The pic of the neglected baby was making me sad. Yes, we can definitely do that. Sorry. The other one was way worse. <laughs> that one, but they, they were, oh. I remember like every time I even see it, like last night looking at that picture, it turns my stomach inside out. But anyway, so I said to her, I'm like, you cannot share this with anyone. Like it has to say strictly confidential. She's like, I promise. I swear. I swear on everything. I will not tell anyone. So I was like, okay. So we went to a Periscope and I showed her the stuff on the Periscope. And I was like, you know, and she's like, oh, I promise I won't say anything. Within like, 10 minutes she had gone on periscope and was going off her head and told everybody about the letter that's what she's like like she does not care about anyone else but herself that girl it's like courtney you know courtney will have stuff sent to her and she'll like won't take out their picture she'll just blast that person 
along with it. And if that person's like, oh, well, you know, like, why would you do that? Like, I'm, and they're like, oh, well, you shouldn't be fighting on that page anyway. Like, she doesn't care. Like, she loses her out, her ins to the page. Now, now she's got no idea what we talk about, you know. But anyway, that was one of the things. And, and so after that with Alison, I was like, okay. I still, like, I didn't hate her or anything, but I was like, I'm not helping her in any way now. <laughs> like, you know, if that's the way she treats people that try to, like, give her a heads up, mm, not happening. So then this is after she's left home. So this is the next part of her blog. She goes, I haven't written in a while, but this time I'm writing about it's a real reason I left town. It's a real reason I left town. I was broken and alone. Caleb had just been forced out of my care. I had no idea what, why they would just do that without any proof of me neglecting him when all I did was try to make him better. Really? That mar- those marks on his face is not proof enough? I feel like maybe when she meets new people and it's, Again, same as Courtney, meets new people and she, like, everybody knows what she's done. Like, everybody knows the past, everybody knows, you know, what she's been up to. And she will act like completely oblivious to why people feel this way about her. Will this live be saved and posted? It won't be able to watch all of it tonight. Yes, it will be. I'm going to be posting it on YouTube. I've just got to edit out a couple of things and we all good. Um, so obviously like that (laughs) CPS, like one look at that face, you'd be like, fuck. But I remember they came and seen her before and they gave her the chance to clear that shit up. They gave her the chance. She didn't do it. Mum got the care. And then within two weeks, he was good. And she goes, gone in the blink of an eye. No one cared for me. I was alone. I still am alone. But right now I have more mental support. As most of you know, I left town away from my boys, 16 hours away. So this is just before the meth started. I told everyone that it was better myself, but the truth is I needed out. I needed out of the horrid, dark place my mind has built for me. I needed away from where my nightmares and suicide attempts had started. The real reason I left town is because I tried killing myself again. I thought this would have been helpful to get away from, to run away from the place that haunted me the most, but turns out that's not Fort McMurray. It was my own mind. I'd have to die to get rid of the hauntings, the truthful thoughts and horrifying memories. I was all for dying at the time. It was all I wanted because I had no one left, not even my precious fighter or my loving hero. I had no one. Death was among me. I think it was meant to say, I don't know. (laughs) It was either then where I knew how I would die or to live the life of a depressed mother who has nothing to live for. My depression has really taken a toll on my body. I can barely move some days, but I have to. Some days I just sit on my bed and cry over nothing or at night I just think and thinking is, isn't always for my best interest. I'm forever haunted until I can make it better. There's nothing I can do. Yes, I've taken pills. They don't work. I only make it worse. I get too scared to take new brands because I'm scared it'll change me as a person. There's days I know what I have to do for a reason to stay alive, but those days are only when I'm with my beautiful boys. Days when I'm alone, I really shouldn't be. I end up cutting or trying to kill myself because I believe that the boys will be better off without me. I mean, that's what everyone makes it out to seem like. If everyone truly wanted me to die, I wouldn't have any problems making it come true. But something is holding me back. Something is keeping me alive. I don't know why or how because death is among me and I shouldn't be held back. I want to gain my wings. My mother doesn't even love me anymore. She was my best friend. I don't know what happened to our friendship, but it's gone. Everything is gone. Why can't I be? I need a reason as to why I'm not dead yet. I can't. I keep trying. My wrists are cut. I pop pills. I try to hang myself. Clearly, I want to be gone. Why can't I be? Why won't anyone let me be gone? Even though you guys hide behind a phone screen to tell me to kill myself. Why am I not dead yet? I need to know. I want to know. This is the most painful blog I've written, yet my heart still aches so bad. I still don't know why I'm alive. I don't know my purpose. I would be, it would be amazing to know though. Then maybe I could stop wishing to never wake up. I'm being selfish. I have two kids, but this is what depression does. Depression hurts you. It kills you. And without the proper help, you'll end up dead or emotionless for life. Dead on the inside. I'm trying to get help, but it hurts to have to, re- to need it. I'd rather just stick with my razor blade for help. Painful, but it will never just use you. So, number one, there was a time, I know it's probably going to be hard to read. I might have to read it out to you guys, but I'll just find the screenshots. But there was a time um, where before she actually attempted to take her life, she faked her death. (sighs) So, very strange. We woke up one day. And there was this fake account going around. I think it was, I can't remember where it was actually on, but it was a fake account and it was posting saying that Alison Patton had committed suicide 
the night before, okay, and everyone was like, oh my gosh, what the hell, and there was heaps of talk about it, it got submitted on the pages, everyone was like, oh my god, and Ali, she wasn't on Periscope at all, like, everyone was like, why is she not on Periscope, and this is back when she was living there, and they're like, why, you know, she hasn't been on here at all, what the hell's going on, everyone was freaking out, and they were messaging her, because I remember at the time, the girls that I used to talk to were like, oh my god, I'm kind of worried, like, I've never really liked her, but I don't want her to kill herself, like, I want to see if she's okay, and they were, everyone was messaging her, she did not reply to anyone, and her and Alea were kind of friends now, and I don't know if you guys remember Alea, but she was on the pages a fair bit, um, she's kind of like a Juliana minion, I would say now, um, but she used to be friends with Allison, and she was like, oh my god, so she tried messaging her, to like get a hold of her, like, are you okay, like, you know, we've read this stuff, and she did not reply, um, wasn't on Instagram all day, wasn't on Periscope all day, people were freaking out, and in the end, one of the girls actually messaged Allison's mum, and they were like, oh my god, is she okay, like, I've just read that she's passed, and I, like, you know, because they were just trying to clarify if it was true or not, and she's like, what the hell, no, she's fine, there's nothing wrong with her. And then it turned out that Alison was actually the one behind the account telling everyone that she had put herself. So, like, that, that is sick. That is the sickest thing I've ever heard. She, yeah, she's very intense. She was way worse um, back then, though. Like, back then, she was just out of control. It was always about having the attention on her. And it did start with her... I think she really wanted to be an Insta mum. She wanted to be Insta famous. Like she tried so hard to be Insta famous. She'd try and like get involved in like the follow trains and things like that. But she just didn't, she couldn't be an Insta mum because she just didn't have that. I don't know. Like she was kind of like looked at for all the wrong reasons, I guess. But anyway, this is what this one says. So she says, um, one of the dumbest things a person can do on purpose, overdosing. Here is my story of what happened to me. I lost my job and it was the last straw. I felt as though I couldn't keep anything in my life. Nothing will ever go right, so I felt like killing myself would be a perfect answer to never get hurt again, never lose anything again. So I went home and took 16 Valium, and after about 10 minutes, maybe even five, there was a knock on the door. I stood up, felt so woozy, walked up the stairs and answered the door. It was the cops and Callie Goble. Alea Nelson called the cops and somehow had gotten a hold of um, Kali, and they made me sit down, and when I got outside, I was wobbling. When they got me in the ambulance, I was fine. I remember them asking me to switch beds and then my memory stopped. Nurses told me I stopped breathing. They had to put that thing up my nose to help me. They pumped my stomach and then made me drink charcoal when I came to a little bit. It was gross, but then I got angry because they cut off my shirt and brand new bra. So I ended up ripping my nose thing out and my IV out of my arm and said, I'm going home. Fuck you guys. Fuck this. They handcuffed me to the bed. I needed a piece. They finally uncuffed me. They let me go to the bathroom. Um, then I had Callie, is it Kaylee, Callie? Um, I'm wondering if it's that other Kaylee, you know, the real, um, the, the Jesus lover one. I know, I almost forgot about the fake death, it's insane. She says, that's all I remember, next thing I know, I'm, I'm in an inpatient psychiatric ward in bed, passing the fuck out. Um, then it was the next morning, apparently the nurses... The nurses pumped me full of extra unneeded drugs and I was done for out cold. That's my story. I remember. I hope no one else has to go through I did what I did and I feel so dumb for doing it. But hey, everything happens for a reason. Yes, so we're a little bit late. I just want to let you guys know, obviously, trigger warning because there is a lot of talk about suicide, cutting, um, miscarriage. There's actually quite a lot of racism in this. Shit, what have I missed? Drug addiction. Pretty much anything that's triggering is in this video. So um, just be mindful of that. So anyway, at this time when all this happened, Alea, um, she was kind of like pretty good friends with her. Alea was like pretty big on the Instamum scene. Not an Instamum, but she was like a part of these pages. She was friends with Narelle for a point there. She was kind of friends with everyone. It's very hard to know with Alea because a lot of people are like, mm, Alea's a snake. They thought she was like, she'd play everyone's sides. Like, you know, I used to be quite good friends with Alea and I had her on the page. But then there was, you know, with people saying, like, she was such good friends with Juliana. There was a bit of a liability in that sense because we know 
how well Juliana can manipulate people. So I was like, no, nah, I don't want to play in this big, in this. So I just kept her off the page for everybody else's safety. You know, I think it's better to keep people off the page that are friends with an Insta mum that's a danger to the page. Like not a danger to the page, but like we don't want the page getting deleted. We enjoy the page. You know, the TWT 4.5 page is the page that you go to if you want to read news. If you want to like, you know, read what everyone has to say, you go to TWT 5.0 because no one holds back there. But there's a lot of weak people that can't handle that sort of stuff. So yes, it's Alison. Yeah, I know. She's going to love the attention. You're right. Like, I mean, Tiara, you've been around since forever. You're a part of the furniture now as well. <laughs> So you would have seen all of this go down. A lot of the stuff with Alison, like we all know, there was a lot of attention stuff where she was just trying to be that instant mum, but she just didn't have it. Like obviously someone else said before, she didn't have a kid, so it was very hard for that. But so many people tried to help her. Like I'm not, we're not going to act like nobody tried to help her. This is what kind of annoys me about her story when she's like, oh, everyone said this about me and everyone says that about me. People really tried. Like Alaya offered like she was going through her own stuff and she offered for Allison when this rehab she went to rehab and Al and she said look she found her a job she's like I, I got you I can get you a job all you have to do you can come and live with me you just have to get here like she's going to pay for a trip everything she offered her the biggest ticket out of all the crap she was and she did she refused it like she, she was just like no nah. she kept saying like oh you know I might, I might, and then she just completely backed out of it. And, like, you know, she had a house there, there was a room for her, a job for her, everything handed to her on a silver platter, and she was like, no. Nah. She just didn't want to do it. It was it was very frustrating to watch. And then after that, I think she lost a lot of faith in people. People were just like, okay, well, do we really want to support her? She obviously doesn't want to support herself. Like, she would, you know, like, she missed that court date. She lost the custody for that reason. 